Hello YouTube, uh, HP Zeta and uh, I'm back here again and uh, as many of you know okay, I just got uh, the needed parts from China to fix our broken DS. The first thing I got was I ordered a cartridge slot, $3.49 I ordered one of these power adapters that they worked out to $1 a new battery that was the most expensive that was $5 about and the battery they gave me one of those screwdrivers first things first don't need that I don't want to infuriate myself the other thing that you'll notice is when I basically seal up a console if I'm waiting for ports and stuff what I do is I just place it in a Ziploc bag all of the sticky stuff can adhere to the Ziploc bag and they remain sticky All the parts, you see another Ziploc bag for the small screws and the, the stuff like that. And all of the parts can stay in one place and you don't have to faff about and uh, look for them two weeks later. It's really the best way to handle something like that. The other thing that I tend to do is I try and half assemble the things so that the motherboard stays straight. And there we go. Tiny little bit. Watch out for my cat that just had a bath <laughs> underneath my chair. Yes, people, uh, you really should bath your cat, uh, it's highly recommended. There we go, enough light to focus on, and everything there is in view. Welcome back. Sorry, the camera, uh, the battery died. <laughs> That does happen often with this camera, unfortunately. Nonetheless, uh, let's continue. Now, as I said before, you can actually, there's little plastic tabs there that will self align it. And then the other thing that you need to bear in mind is that you really want a chisel tip with this. I've already got my needle tip here, so I'm just going to use that because that's what I got. Okay, now what you want to do is just add a little bit of solder and heat up the pad and the connector and just add a little bit for now. I really need that chisel tip. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I'm just going to do it this way around just to make it easier for me. Okay, that's the first one done. Now what I'm going to do is just align it so the second one all of my pins are in the correct spot there we go because you've only got one opportunity to align this basically and that's right in the beginning there we go. so to do the exact same and you always basically start off by doing the pads first and then the pins so that everything kind of holds together It's still on camera, I hope, there we go. You want to add about the same amount as what was on the cartridge slot that we had before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, to move this this way around so I can see it and I'm going to zoom you in as far as my camera allows. There we go, it looks like it's in there. Get as much light here as possible. And basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to lift up the side here so that you can see. This is not how you normally would solder it at all, but this will allow you to see what I'm doing, allow me to see a little bit less. Yeah, 
And because I'm using the needle tip, I'm just going to do this per pin. You'll notice that Nintendo actually has a lot of solder on the pins. Now I'm going to do about the same, which is a lot of solder on the pins. And we're just going to solder one pin at a time. Normally you wouldn't do one pin at a time, you'll use a chisel tip and you'll just do all of them, but this is the easier way to do it if you don't know how to use a chisel tip and flux. And don't worry about having a lot of solder on there. If you have a look at the way Nintendo soldered these on, and they also do it by hand, you'll notice it has, the method method has a lot of solder on it too. So you can use liberal amounts here. Now because of the <laughs> angle I've got this, I can barely see the pins. So I'm, uh, I'm probably using way too much solder, or way too little. Right, so that's enough of that. Let's make this pretty now. Yeah, I used way too much on most of those, but it's just this you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now if you're doing this for the first time and you don't trust your work, I highly recommend just taking a voltmeter and setting it to continuity and just double checking the continuity on all of your pins. And I've got no shorts. Next up, I'm just quickly going to go here by the power connector. I'm going to drop in my power connector. There's two different types of uh, DS like motherboard. There's ones with free all power connectors and ones without. Um, quite literally, the only way that you'll tell the difference is if you test them. The other thing that I noticed on these is that they're not all bent all the way down like they're supposed to so it doesn't sit 100% flush. I just want to rectify that quickly. Much better. So we're just going to drop that in. We 
There you go, and you can actually see that the surface is, there's enough surface tension there to hold the parts in for you while you start soldering. Once again, I'm using the needle tip. You should actually be using the chisel tip, but most of you will already have needle tips, so I'm just soldering that in quickly. A uh, good advice on a needle tip is the needle itself is actually fairly low temperature compared to the base, so you always use a little upper part of it just to heat it up. And because we took so much care when we fitted that, I don't have to go and pick up spots and or anything like that. And I think that's all for the soldering side of things. It's a new power connector fitted. It's flush. New socket fitted. It's going to give everything a quick clean. Like you always should do. And I don't feel guilty about using a lot of solder on the cartridge slot. If you have a look at the way Nintendo actually hand solders it, it looks exactly the same as their solder works. So I don't mind using a bit extra on that. Now I notice my pins are a little bit higher than Nintendo's ones here, so I'm just going to cut them closer to the board. Do a few snips. Get them as low as possible. Probably is needed. I, I just like keeping things exactly the same as what the stock was. There you go. Right, uh, let's give this board a final clean. I'm just going to clean all of the pads before I reassemble it. I've got my other case here, I'm just going to do the same, I'm just going to clean it as much as possible. The reason why I'm doing this is I just don't want to open a machine again and clean these later if I find that it doesn't work properly. There's a little bit of gunk on these. Um, the machine is, like I said before, is in very good condition. Now the other thing that you'll need to notice here is how the actual cables are connected here. One goes through the bottom there, the other one goes through here and up like that, which isn't actually correct. It's supposed to go around like that. And up, it was some amateur tried to connect this himself. Right, so, so got my board in hand. Going to take off that clip, this clip. Just going to declip everything. Fits in the side. Now with the DSS, there is a little bit of a trap here. Um, that looks like the rim cable is in. For most people, it'll look like it, but you actually have to push it in until it click, clicks, it like clips into place. There. Now it's in. If you don't do that, then when you switch your machine on, it's not going to have power. Uh, it's going to flash the screens, and whichever screen isn't plugged in properly will get switched off. So, doing the same at the bottom here again. Now, 
really hard to get the tweezers out for that, but there we go. I'm sliding that in there. Put that closed. Now this is the tricky spot. This is the spot that a lot of people accidentally damage their machines. But basically you have to put that driven cable back in like that again. And the other cables need to stay in place. So a lot of people go and they actually grab a set of tweezers for this. And uh, as soon as you do that, that bottom ribbon cable is so sensitive that you actually snap off the connector. So the best way to do this is actually to do it by hand. And just push it in all the way up until it clicks in. Close your connector. Turn it around. Let's go and this up already. Okay, and now you just want to make sure that your cables are in the right spot. Right, let's try it again. I'm just going to straighten it out this time. There we go. I think it's very very important is uh, you actually have to put this Wi-Fi adapter back if you don't put the Wi-Fi adapter back then unfortunately the machine simply won't turn on it'll give you the big finger Alright, now it's time to grab your screws. First thing I'm going to do is just add those two small little screws back in. That will give me uh, some stability to put the shoulder buttons back in the way they're supposed to be. perfect. Now these are a bit of a pain in the back side, the left and the right ones. Basically what you have to do, and this is quite tricky, I'll see if I can zoom in for a little bit of a better view on this. Okay. So the first thing you do is you take the spring or this little leaf, it has to go in like that. And then you have to drop the shaft in, but not all the way, only halfway. Then you can put, the, put it in the side that it needs to be on. No, sorry, left side. Okay. And once that's in, this little leaf spring, this wasn't done on the machine when I got it, but you have to do that, you have to move the leaf spring over and clip it into the plastic, and that will give you that rigidity that you're looking for on the console when you're using it. If you don't do that, then <laughs> it feels a bit funky, and it's not the stock feeling that you expect from a machine. Trust me, this, this looks easier than it actually is. It's one of the, how can I say, most difficult parts of this is actually that. Because uh, especially the right one, for the right hand side, it really doesn't like playing with you or cooperating. So you have to press that in, hold it down. All 
at this stage you can take the case I've got the case here and you're just going to, the first thing that you're going to do is it has these little slides at the side, you can see that for the power switch make sure that it's down okay, it's, it's not up because you'll snap off the power switch volume control, I like putting it in the center and in the center on the volume and then it's just a question of clipping everything back together And you'll see because you use the third party cartridge slot it is a bit higher than the normal one so it's not as close a fit but it's not that bad. Let me zoom out and show you. You'll see that it, it does have some spring back in it. it, it's normal. It's not something to worry about at all. Because it's not something that the person can change at all. So let's start with the two shoulder screws, remember the two shoulder screws are the only two that's this golden color so yeah that's like a golden color so I see that the LCD is nicely mounted, yes that's nicely thin our buttons are nice and firm start and select works because this is the last time that you'll be able to actually fiddle around with this so you need to be sure that everything works and everything is tested now before you close everything and you find out that nothing works properly and you made a big mess up somewhere so I'm grabbing the store again and just going into that top corner ah that's the wrong one the stop point was here. It's so easy to uh, put the screws in the wrong places on these machines. Now I've got my replacement battery. This is a generic uh, from China. Shouldn't give me any hassles though. I cleaned up the back plate as much as possible. You can see all of that corrosion that got to it over the years. nice and firm, no surprises and let's see if it switches on low battery immediately uh, my battery's dead <laughs> let me get a charger and I can test the charger while we're busy right, 
right, welcome back. And uh, I've got my cheap uh, Chinese charger that I've got from somewhere. It's like a four in one. I'm using one of my own power supplies though because the Chinese power supplies are really bad. You can see the charging light is nice and bright, it's working. Still don't have a <laughs> stylus, I'll use an earbud. So the touch screen still works. There we go, that all works. So let's test the cartridge slot quickly. I've got a Nintendo Dogs and a DSTT here. I'll try the Nintendo Dogs out first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to take off the labels and everything else and probably show you how the end product looks. The placement cartridge slot is a little bit tighter than a normal one, but it is generic. You come to expect that a little bit. Battery probably still isn't charged fully, so let's give it some juice. Absolutely perfect. Oh god, someone loved bugs. All the buttons are still working. I don't know what Eleanor does in this game, but they click nicely, so they should still be working. And uh, yeah, the machine just works perfectly. So let me clean it off and I'll try and take some photos or something that's a bit better to show you what it looks like and uh, tally it up. But uh, so far, I think we spent less than $10 getting this machine up and running. So twenty dollars in total for a machine. I guess I could have overseas. You can get them for twenty dollars. You can't here. Yeah, they're like fifty. So it's not too bad. So I'll see you soon. All right. So I got the labels off, and uh, I used some good old Zippo lighter fluid and a cloth because that's the only stuff that removes labels without damaging the paintwork on these consoles and I must say this machine is spotless it has a few scratch, scratches in the paint like some vertical ones but generally speaking the first week of someone using it that's what you expect the screens are not a mark on them absolutely perfect sadly the bottom is a little bit worse for wear some marks here and there but uh, all in all I don't think that's too bad so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, put it in a nice bag for my friend and uh, yeah this is going to be his gift from me <laughs> super cool DS Lite Anyway, that's all from me, HBZ. Until next time, goodbye.